Your wrestling name is really important. We've done this before. If you're called Facey McFace, you're probably not going to headline WrestleMania. Now that I've said that, they probably should. We could all chant McFace at them. And look, we all get the deal. It comes down to licensing and merchandising and WWE wanting to own somebody's name. But I am Simon Miller. Welcome to What Culture Wrestling. And yeah, here's 10 real life names that were better than the gimmick ones. Number 10, Fandango. So this one takes us in a different direction. And look, I love Fandango. I thought it was a super ridiculous character. And when he was dancing around, thinking that was going to help him in a wrestling ring, I was just like, man, just good times. The thing is, his real name is Curtis Hussey. And if you said that in a room of people and non-wrestling fans, nobody would laugh. But if you then went to want to come and watch Fandango, they'd go, ha, ha. No. In short, then, his birth name is actually better than the one Vince McMahon gave him. But even down at NXT, we were doing this. We called him Johnny Curtis. I mean, that's far more generic. And I do understand it ties into the gimmick. But I've made my point. Number nine, Gunther. No, I can't get mad at this anymore because I wasn't really that bothered anyway. But as time has always proved, Gunther is totally fine as a wrestling name. The longest reigning intercontinental champion ever, though, as we do know, used to be called Walter. That's because his real life name is Walter Hahn. Now the reason that is interesting is because when Walter arrived on the main roster, originally WWE wanted to call him Gunther Starks before somebody said, no, that's the name of a real life Nazi U-boat commander. So all of a sudden he was just Gunther. Good. So I can only assume the reason we were gonna do this is because they wanted a German Austrian sounding name. <laughs> So why didn't you just go with Walter Hahn? I mean, it still sounds like he's going to come into the ring and wreck somebody. And we as fans could sit there and go, Hahn, Hahn, Hahn. Let's not do that. So this is a classic case of overthinking or once again, WWE wanting to own somebody's name. Either way, I don't really care. Number eight, Carmella. One of the more generic WWE names, just because it sounds like they give this kind of thing to all the female wrestlers. Her real name, Carmella that is, is Leah Van Dale. Now, if you told me this was a fighter from a video game, I believe you, like in Mortal Kombat or something, and you would think that WWE would love the triple word. I mean, it rolls off the tongue. But you could also wind up the internet and shorten this to LVD. <laughs> but we probably shouldn't do that. There's enough people arguing online anyway. Now, obviously, I hope that she is employed forever, but if one day she did decide to go to a different promotion, bam, there it is. Number seven, Billy Graham. Now, Billy Graham is proof that if you have an awesome nickname, nothing else matters. Because we just threw Superstar at the start of it. And well, it worked out pretty good. When you do get rid of that, though, we had still essentially taken two first names and turned that into a whole name. And when you get to his real name, it was Edridge Coleman. Edridge. And that is not a name you hear every day. And if you're trying to get some heat in a wrestling ring, well, I would go by Edridge. And even if you went by Superstar Edridge Coleman, it actually still works. But let's break it down once more. The reason he got over like he did is because he was so charismatic and so flamboyant. It doesn't mean I can't get mad about this. Somebody become Edridge Coleman. Six, our truth. So I do get this one, but still, our truths real name is Ron Killings. There it is. We're done. He has gone through the gambit with names because at one point WWE called him K Quick with two Ks. But let's go back to our story from earlier. If you go up to your non-wrestling friend and say, I'm going to go watch Ron Killings, they'll be like, yeah, I'll come with you too. Throughout his career and in different companies, he actually was able to use Ron Killings. But what is the deal with this like letter in his names? I mean, we had K Quick and now we've got our truth Now, if I were in charge, what I would do is that when we were going to do Goofy Wrestling for Life, I would call him our truth and then when it was time to get serious, he could become Ron Killings. And we've seen him do this before when he does kind of shift characters with his little Jimmy. That sounded bad. It also makes me question, why aren't I in creative anymore? Number five, Kelly Kelly. I mean, if it wasn't weird enough that we just went with the same name twice, her real name is Barbie Blank. I mean, that is amazing. And maybe this comes down to a merchandising question because WWE knew that Mattel would come a knocking. But what are they gonna do? Argue with someone's birth certificate? I don't think so. So maybe one day Vince McMahon just woke up and went, oh man, I can't be bothered to deal with that. Let's just call her Kelly Kelly. Which is still so damn weird. It's like Luigi Mario. My favorite part about all of this though is that no matter which direction she did head in, either could be a character from Marvel. Number four, Liv Morgan. All things considered, Liv Morgan is a good wrestling name. Sounds real. Once again, though, if she ever decides to leave WWE, she has the perfect name waiting because it is Gianna Daddio. That is incredible. But this is most definitely a situation where WWE has gone for the more generic choice for one reason or another. 
Although I suppose I do get it. Because I can see the internet getting so mad that WWE called someone Daddy-O before they realized, oh wait, the joke's on us, that's her real name. When I mean, you could even join these together to become Live Daddy-O. Once again, why is my phone not ringing? Number three, Butch. Or Pete Dunne, you can pick whichever one you want. Although this one does make sense. Because if you're in a Vince McMahon company and he walks up to you and says, hi right, pal, I want you to be Butch like this rabid dog, and you embrace the character, you're probably going to have a career for life. Once again, though, away from the wrestling ring, do you know what his friends would refer to him as? Peter England? Because that's his damn name. And this does explain the Pete bit, and maybe he got rid of England, because he was like, man, if I wrestle anywhere else out of this country, everyone's going to boo me. But this is Vince McMahon. He absolutely loves foreign heels. I'm amazed he didn't go with it. I mean, you could even go the direction of Gunther with this and just call him England and write it all in caps. Don't do it. Number two, Ricky Steamboat. So I'm sure very early on in his career, people saw Ricky Steamboat and went, I think this could be the best baby face we've ever had. And therefore, we've got to change his name. And do you want to know why? Because his real name is Richard Blood. Blood. Instantly, the children will start going tee hee hee because yes, you can break this down to dick blood. So I bet he had a great time in school. If I had a time machine, I would somehow put him and Ron Killings in the same era because then you could have Killing Blood. I'm not sure if he could still use the dragon nickname if we did do this though. I mean, Richard the Dragon Blood. It's a very strange ring to it. It's wrestling. You can do whatever you want. Number one, Dolph Ziggler. So out of all the daft names WWE has come out with over the years, this is the weirdest one. I mean, what is a Dolph and what is a Ziggler? It tickled Vince McMahon to such a degree he turned this into a whole storyline featuring him. But look, the litmus test is back once again. Do we even think twice about it now? No, we don't. As most of us know now, though, his real name is Nick Nemeth, which once again sounds like a character created by Stan Lee. So I would absolutely love to know where Dolph Ziggler came from, because it is just so wild but it's not like it held him back, did it? He is still one of the best wrestlers and most underutilized of the modern generation. And again, he is out in the world at the moment. He could turn up on AEW. When he does, you bet your ass, he will be Nicholas Nemeth. Do you know of any real names that are way better than a wrestler's fake one? Make sure you let us know in the comments below and don't make it up. I'm watching before you like the video, share the video and subscribe. Then click one of the videos on the screen, should you so wish. Go to whatculture.com and follow us on social media. We'd appreciate that. But I appreciate you for tuning in. Keep doing it. Keep clicking away. Keep supporting YouTube or our YouTube. There's some crazy YouTubes out there. A lot of negativity. Goodbye. One of the only professional wrestling podcasts that's actually worth a f If we can make one of the best wrestlers in the world say that just by listening to our podcast, what happens when we do this? What do you make of the night? That's another satisfied customer. <laughs> <laughs>